In 1971, Professor Dr. C. Ray Jeffrey coined the term crime prevention through environmental design, or SEPTED. Inspired by the works of Elizabeth Wood and Jane Jacobs, he argued that everyone needed to work together to understand and address not an offender's background, which had until that time been the trend, but how learning patterns and the environment's influence on his brain affected his behavior and vice versa. Jeffrey's work, developed simultaneously with Oscar Newman's defensible space theory, kickstarted the SEPTED movement, an overarching and interdisciplinary approach to crime prevention. Newman, an architect whose work focused on public housing, established three principles which he claimed bolstered tenants' sense of stewardship and lessened their fear of crime. They were territoriality, natural surveillance, and image and milieu. Across the ocean around the same time, Ron Clark was developing situational crime prevention. Aligned with rational choice and routine activity theories, the goal of situational prevention is to reduce the opportunity for crimes that occur in particular places at particular times. By 2003, Clark had established 25 different techniques for making someone think twice about committing a crime in one of five ways. By increasing the risk of being caught, by increasing the effort they need to put into it in order to pull it off, reducing a criminal's rewards, removing things that might provoke someone, or by eliminating excuses for deviant behavior. In 1979, Herman Goldstein laid the groundwork for problem-oriented policing, and in 1987, the first agency-wide success story was circulated. Problem-oriented policing is a practical approach to policing and management that addresses the underlying conditions causing problems in a community. Agencies learned they could use the routine activity-based problem analysis triangle and the SARA model to scan the environment for problems, analyze their causes, respond effectively, and assess outcomes with the aim of sharing what they learned. 1981, Paul and Patricia Branningham unleash environmental criminology and present the world with crime pattern theory. They explained that the movement of people overlap in an ever-changing urban mosaic. In this push and pull of activity, victimization occurs when the movement of both offenders and non-offenders collides among anchor points like school, the mall, and home. Land uses themselves can act as crime generators, attractors, and detractors, and can help predict where crime is likely to occur. Two years later, Joseph Shealy pumped the brakes and noted that a lot of theories to date simply assumed and took for granted certain factors that supposedly drove crime. Through his own study, he was able to show that for someone to successfully commit a crime such as theft, four conditions had to be met. One, the offender must be motivated. Two, they have to feel free from social constraints. Three, they must have the skill or the technical ability to commit the crime. And four, they have to be presented with the opportunity or the chance to do so. Acknowledging that of the four, we can control opportunity the most is what drives a lot of crime prevention today and strengthen the argument for applying SEPTED and situational prevention strategies in practice. In 1991, Tim Crow combined ingredients from several past theories into a practical guide to SEPTED. He asserted that the proper design and effective use of the built environment can lead to a reduction in the fear and incidence of crime, an improvement in the quality of life, and enhanced profitability. In what many now refer to as first-generation SEPTED, he introduced the 3D approach, which helps us understand there should be no confusion between what and who a space is for and how it is designed. Crow gave us three overlapping strategies for designing and managing space to achieve desired behavior and outcomes, natural surveillance, natural access control, and territorial reinforcement. Opportunities for surveillance and access control can be achieved using tools that are natural, mechanical, or organized in nature. Crow also asserted that the maintenance of a space and the image it projects are intertwined with these principles. Second and third generations of SEPTED broke through in more recent years. The purpose of each is to revisit some of the non-physical strategies of SEPTED that more or less got placed on the back burner due to an overemphasis on SEPTED's mechanical tactics like target hardening. Second generation SEPTED produced a blueprint for four ways of approaching the social aspects and end goals of SEPTED. Third generation helps expand on factors related to sustainability, access to resources, and quality of life. Together, second and third generations of SEPTED remind us it requires a multidisciplinary approach to be a successful method of crime prevention. While crime and crime prevention theories and strategies continue to develop and adapt to our changing world, the goal of any one will always be, as C. Ray Jeffrey put it, self-actualization of the human potential. And what is more, theory means nothing if we don't put these concepts to work in real-life settings.
To learn ways you can implement SEPTED and other crime prevention strategies in your community, visit septedcentral.com.